Okay, welcome, welcome to my YouTube video. Um, I'm going to be installing a, a Burger Motorsports intercooler, uh, not intercooler, uh, the heat exchanger, uh, on, on my 2019 Infinity Q50 um, S Signature Edition, blah, 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 blah. Um, so um, I'm not going to shoot the the whole in depth of taking things apart. I'm going to kind of skip through it um, just so people, you know, I just don't jump from a uh, you know, starting project to the end of the project and go, wham, bam, you know, here it is, it looks good, great. Uh, but I'm going to kind of hurry through things because um, there's plenty of videos, you know, online. That's not plenty, but there's more than five, six, or seven of them. So um, if you really need help, um, figuring out what to uh, take apart, then there's some other more detailed videos. But this one's a 2019. I don't know if it's any different. Um, it's probably very similar. There might be one or two differences. But I'm going to hopefully get this installed with as little uh, hassle and as little problems as possible. So uh, with that, I'm going to get started. So I'm just going to pop these up. This is the super easy part. I'm not gonna make everyone watch while I get all this stuff done. Then the next is gonna be uh, the bolts under under here um, and on the other side, and and then everything's underneath and then uh, behind behind the wheels on uh, that side and the, and the passenger side. So and then. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the bumper will, will pull off and then I'll be able to get to the intercooler. So, all right, now I'm going to just remove these bolts right here. I got a high enough extension to make this try to make this a little easier because it's at a weird angle. And I don't want to put too much stress on this plastic. Okay, so if I'm doing this right, um, I've never seen anyone pull a little bracket off um, right in here where this bolt, let me see, this one will be configured. Let me see, let me get my bearings, yeah. So this one over on that side is configured, configured like that. And then this one over here is configured upside down like this is just one stamp piece and so this one fits right there so this has got to come out you're going to drop that and not put that back in it's not going to not going to hold um hold it right so you gotta that may be a little bit different or someone's not noted that but now i'm going to get to this uh, next one and pull that one out it looks like i got to get under here because there's a 10 millimeter 10 millimeter bolt right there near the edge so um, so I can try to pull that out and have a little bit more flexibility. So I'm gonna remove that real quick. I hate taking a brand new car apart, but you know, gotta do it to install this and be able to uh, potentially move up to the tune and get that extra power and not, you know, not wear out the motor or have it go into uh, limp mode and have more problems down the road. So I gotta, gotta get the, the heat exchanger on. It'd be pretty easier if you had a lift. Um, I think I got everything. I thought to just pull it off. Um, and then you gotta make a mental note of, of where all the, cause there's screws and 10 millimeter bolts and, and, and clips and, and uh, little studs with the plastic studs you put in. Uh, they're all over in different places. Um, so you gotta keep track of those. And one thing is to use your cell phone and take pictures, um, and, you know, take pictures of the areas. And that way you can go back and reference, uh, you know, if a screw was in one hole and, and a, a, a nut was in the other, we've got that one that bolts inside the fender right there. It's gray. And uh, you've got some uh, those pop pins um, you've got 
got some screws, uh, Phillips screws, and then you've got, you know, the 10 millimeter bolts uh, with the attached washer, and they're just all over. So you got to keep track of that. Hopefully, I got it now, and I'm just gonna um, pull the bumper off and uh, and then set it down. You know, new car. I want to take care of it, protect it, make sure it's all taken apart nice and neatly Let's see if I'm missing something. I mean pulling stuff off really really fast and ragged tear stuff up so I want to be really delicate push and pull and figure out if there's something I'm not doing right if there's something additional for this 19 model and uh, it's just time consuming and it's not worth videoing so I'm just gonna uh, jump to uh, getting this pulled off uh, delicately and then and then we'll move on from there okay after pulling pushing tugging manipulation making sure you know 30 screws or bolts or nuts are taken out I, I, I pulled it off I mean hopefully it's gonna go back on <laughs> Um, there's a lot of attachment points and places it's going to fit into. So, now my next task, since it's off and it's, and it's sitting on the, on the, on the, on my fabric, I need to uh, disconnect everything so that, so that I can uh, pull it away and then actually get to this freaking super small uh, heat exchanger. Okay, I don't want to come across negative in any way, but that was not fun. I've, none of the videos that I've seen have had the amount of stuff that had to come off the front bumper um, to get this to be able to like take it over there and, and, and work on the car. I, I, had, I had to take my grill out because behind the grill were, were, were uh, com way to, unless I just wanted to be a baboon and just rip everything out and cut everything, uh, you know, and then come back and duct tape and, and zip tie everything back and, and screw the, you know, the factory uh, little brackets and harnesses. You know, I could have done that, but man, I'm not gonna do that to a brand new car. So, um, yeah, I had to take that out and, and take out the bottom bottom, um, you know, uh, the bottom portion, I don't know what I'll call this crap, uh, the bottom end, because all, all the harnesses are attached to that, and I don't even have some of the, you know, the features that, the you know, the most expensive cars have. Um, I mean, I got a front camera, that connector was, uh, um, all the, the connectors through all my years, I, there, there's like, there's 15 of them, and they, they all come out a different way, you push, pull, snap, um, you know, pliers on one side, pliers on the other. I mean, it's just a guessing game and you end up tearing up the connector. So I had to go take a break and go get on the computer and just cool off for a second and it came out and, and you know, and then it became more clear how the camera connector came off. Uh, just, and that was just to detach it from the front grill. So now I can um, take this away. I gotta find a place to put it on. Um, and now I can get to working on the rest of the car. All right, just a quick minute. I'm gonna have so many different pieces of video. It's gonna be nightmare to edit. Um, this is what was causing me so much. This sensor is connected in a whole bunch of places to the to the front of the car. And then this, you know, if I just wanted to break this stuff off, or uh, you know, try to go buy those at the you know, Infinity dealership again, you know, I don't even know what that's called or that part number. And then I've got this lower grill section and uh, and this had to be pressed out and that was metic meticulous, uh, time consuming. And then the, the, the sensors, uh, you know, forward sensors and then I couldn't see at all how to, to you know, to get these to press these out because it was just at that extreme angle. Uh, in there, you know, with being linked to the other wires to be able to pull the grill out. So, um, you know, I had to just pull the front, the, the grill out here, the, the lower grill out, 
and and then rip some some uh, special uh, tape, you know, that they had securing the wires, like a carbon fiber weave with an adhesive, and you know, and I just hate um, you know tearing stuff up that was factory, you know, um, you know, because they did it from the factory for a reason. And uh, I want to try to put it back the way it is so that the car is as good of a car as it has been before I tore the front bumper off. Um, awesome car. I love this car. And I don't want to change anything about the car except give it some more horsepower. And to give it more horsepower, I have to put an intercooler, I mean, the heat exchanger on there so that the motor will perform correctly. So. You know, otherwise I would have never have done this heat exchanger tearing the whole front of the car off, even though I've done it on other cars and they were a little more simple um, or maybe I didn't care as much. If it's a customer's car or someone is not your car, it's so much easier just to, to tear into things and not give it a second guess. But since it's my car and I love this car, I want to I want to baby it and take care. I don't want to scratch things, drop things, you know, I don't want to do anything incorrectly. So, you know that's part of the game uh it makes it a little bit more difficult so other than that i'm gonna tear in and take the front uh this front portion off and this plastic this little rubber piece should just come off just want to be delicate not just i'll just tear things off most people this just falls off mine was secured on there um a little bit more securely so with that said, we're moving forward, getting closer to our next step. It's like nothing, nothing in the videos that I've seen are quite like this one. Everything is, uh, it's got connectors on there that have to be gone around to the back. Or else, I mean, you can just cut them off and just put the bumper back on and not worry about it. Probably like most people do, but I don't. I don't function like that. I don't, I, don't, I don't ever do anything, treat anything like that. So, you know, got to balance on this. I had a couple people would be a little bit easier, you know, that crash bar and then you got to disconnect some things and never, everything just comes as easy. But, um, so here I am now to the next portion of removing the stock heat exchanger and I guess positioning, um, you know, the new one on there. So, uh, just an update in my process of where I am. Hopefully, you know, I don't get to a point where I can't proceed and I need help, or, you know, because this car isn't going anywhere. Um, you know, thank goodness I have a garage. I mean, if this was outside, it'd be with noise and weather, and now it's starting to get dark, and I can uh, proceed to this work on this tomorrow to, to finish it up if I have to. I'm try to finish it up tonight or you know, tomorrow, but then I got to use my car uh, for work on Monday. So, you know, definitely got to get it working. So yeah, here we go. A closer look. Um, I haven't put this hose back on. I'm in the process of filling this up. Um, I saved a lot, you know, probably 90% uh, of the fluid, some leaked out. Um, and so I'm, I filled that back up and it's um, probably half full. Um, I got two more bottles and, and it was a nightmare. I've got more things attached than any video that I've seen on the front fascia that had wires attached to it. Just, I can't get over that. And, and almost impossible to not mash up, trying to snake that other one out behind this one and pull it out. I mean, um, I'm, like I said, pretty ultra particular. Where's my, where's my knife at? Oh, I can't keep up with anything. It's like a mess. But uh, yeah, you'll smash. I mean, there's just no way to get stuff out. And, uh, and you'll smash up a bunch of these veins. Um, I tried to limit as much as I could. Um, and, uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but I'll put this back on and then maybe uh, purge the system tonight uh, or, or purge it tomorrow. I'll probably do it tonight. I gotta, I gotta get all this buttoned up by tomorrow evening. Um, and then uh, burger tuning, they, they included hose clamps with that hose, but that hose is for the heat exchanger that I, 
had in my initial review before this one. So that's why that was small. And then the hose clamps, I was thinking these hose clamps are fit and they don't even come close to fitting on that with the hose. So I'm sitting here without a running car and I got to go to the auto parts store. And luckily I have my mountain bike and I just, you know, it's 9.30 or 9 o'clock and I got to run up and get the proper size hose clamps um, to install these, right? I mean, the stock ones wouldn't even, wouldn't even fit on. Um, wouldn't even fit on these uh, compression wouldn't fit on so I had to go get those so that was kind of a mess so we'll wrap this up and I did have to cut this and this doesn't like to be cut even with an ultra sharp uh, you know knife that's you know polished sharp um, so I had to always run back into the house because I don't have all my tools out here because they'll, they'll get stolen so I had to cut those with scissors it was the only thing that would cut that um, my knife just I made mean, my ultra sharp knife it'll shave hair it just bounced off it like it was uh, you know like it was kryptonite um, you know obviously they have that on there so it doesn't you know get abrasive on the hose and wear through the hose so that's a definite uh, they succeeded there but yeah um, when I start wrapping it up I'll take another video update okay for the people watching this is the big step. Um, I've never done this before. Um, yeah, I've never done this before. Never had any experience with this tool. I've uh, looked at a couple places online. There's not a lot of information online about this process. The uh, Burger, Tim, Burger Motorsports website has it. A portion of it, it's, it's just so simplified so quick. I mean, it gives you an idea of what you're doing, but there's no specifics. Um, what I'm guessing on uh, with this aspect is the PSI with my compressor that I'm going to plug into here. What PSI am I going to run this little uh, unit that's going to do the vacuum? It's kind of a guess. I think I'm at 65. PSI. I don't know if it needs to be higher or lower. Um, and then out of my five pieces, this is the piece that fits. Um, with all these other uh, uh, adjustable, well, they will be adjustable by using different ones to fit fill caps. Um, I've topped everything off. I've sealed it off. I think the first thing that is specified do there is also some information on their website um, that uh, tells you kind of how to operate it's the OEM tools and this is the air back coolant refiller okay so I mean it's pretty straightforward um, put that in there I think that's the one that works the best and then as you screw this down this expands so we'll see how the best to do this is. Let's see if it works. Guess as you go. Fits out some small amount of the coolant and some foam. Make sure that works. And then this goes in the bottle. I'm gonna crack a, a new bottle. I got two two gallons. Just to make sure. I mean, I don't know how much it's it's gonna take. It would probably be fine to do the one that's partially full. Kind of like not like to open up a second one just to keep it fresh if this stuff goes bad. Got some more right here. There's a considerable amount of there. Maybe I'll just do this one. Maybe I'll risk it. I guess I could just always run the vacuum again. So get my junk. Make 
sure that's on the bottom. And then I saw um, a place, and I mentioned this before in a, pre, a prior video, that you, it says to have this up high, higher, at least uh, about the same level, because um, the coolant system's lower. And everyone, the videos, the two or three videos that I've seen, people have this on the ground, and, and I, you know, I'll follow the instructions. You know what works best. You know, just like getting this uh, pump. I mean, uh, the uh, air, the coolant refiller. I mean, you got to follow these, these, um, these guidelines and these rules that they're set by. You know, the manufacturer of the car. I guess here we go. Let's see. These are going to be open. This one is closed to the container. This one is open, and this one will be open where the air is coming through to create the vacuum, and then. The gauge right here is on zero, so from my understanding, it's going to go negative 25, and then I'm going to lock those and turn the compressor off. And then I'm going to let it sit for five minutes and make sure there's no, no leaks in the system. And then once that's okay, um, once everything's shut off and it's been five minutes, I'm going to, it's going to create a, a 20, negative 25 pressure in there pounds of pressure and then I'm just going to open that and it's going to suck it in so fingers crossed it all works smoothly here we go here's my experience negative seven hope I'm not doing it too fast Coming up on negative 10. There's lots of, lots of air in there. And I can increase it. Not going over nine, negative nine. But I think it's supposed to climb up in the negative 20. It's only going up to negative 10. Maybe the gasket I have on there isn't tight enough. Let me, uh, let me uh, figure out what's going on. Okay, a little bit more. Playing around. It's not going up to negative 25, but look, I, I think I got the extra fittings because this I'm having to use this nozzle one that's not tightened down. I mean, it's holding, you know, 10, 11, 12, you know, the, the problem is, you know, I, maybe I wasn't supposed to fill it up, you know, it would, it would be a higher negative pressure. Maybe it just can't pull any more pressure because I filled up the, the heat exchanger part and then I topped off the overflow uh, bottle, um, you know, and it's, it obviously was sucking air and sucking fluid. So let me see if I open this, if it tries to suck any fluid in. Okay. And it sucked it in. I mean, it was up there towards 15, and now it's got more fluid and it's holding at 9. Let me crack this and see if it sucks any more in there. I mean, my guess, it's, it's full. I guess it would have taken 
a higher PSI if there was more space in there um, and less fluid because it surely didn't suck in very much um, and I had a negative uh, pull on it so I guess my the easiest thing to do is just call this done if there's anyone out there that's um, more experienced at this than me please chime in and tell me what I did wrong or or I did right or uh, so it's last that time it sucked it in it filled this bottle up and it's almost full this is something I got for another project um, so let's see here So I'll put that to the choir level. I mean, all my. Gosh, um, you know, I think I did what I needed to do. I mean, I don't think that I skipped anything. Um, I should be good to go, but like I said, if there's someone out there with more experience, I mean, please try and say, don't say you're an idiot, but to say, um, uh, even, you know, I, don't, I should be using the nitride glove. I just, you know, I just gotta like to use my hands with things, but. Okay, now that it's done, I'm just going to give an afterthought of this whole process. I think this was a pain in the ass. This this really this was not enjoyable. It's a helpful experience um, to have. Um, so I think you know that's a benefit. You know it's always good to work on some different things and you know get your mind, challenge your mind and your hands and your thinking skills. That's a good thing, but I mean, uh, I'm not a, a regular mechanic. Um, I don't, I don't wrench on cars, but maybe, uh, you know, once a year, uh, with a different car that I'll buy and, and I'll put an intercooler or a shift kit or, uh, you know, shift bushings or, you know, just, uh, simple mods to kind of help. I mean, it's more advanced than what most people want to do, but I'm by no means can rebuild a transmission or, uh, you know, put pistons in and, uh, you know, check valve clearance. And it's just, I'd have to research that. I could do it if I was trained, but I'm not trained. So I'm just a, a weekend mechanic type, you know, I'm, I'm intuitive, intuitive inclined, mechanically inclined, if you want to say. So, and I, I've got some different tools. My tools always get stolen. My garage has been broken into and I've had, you know, $500 worth of tools my $4,500 mountain bike, my $1,000 camera lens. Um, I just got back from a trip and I had my camera lens in a bag. Uh, all my tools, my weed eater, my leaf blower, it was about $7,000 worth of stuff. So um, I had to go out and buy all brand new tools, but I've had those for a little bit. But back to the car. Um, I really wouldn't recommend this to a, a lot of just casual people. Um, that, that think they have a little bit of car experience. I mean, it's just a pain in the butt. And working on the ground, my knees, I went to bed last night and I am so sore. My back, I can't even, after being on the ground for a while on my knees in a certain position, I, I could get up and even walk to my house. I was like, you know, 90 years old. It really, really hurt. Um, there, it just sucks working on the ground. If the car was, you know, from here up to about right here, it'd be perfect. Um, and that uh, another uh, in interesting thing that the weight on the uh, heat exchanger, man, I, I you, you couldn't tell me that it doesn't weigh 30 pounds or, or 30 plus pounds. But I went and weighed it at the post office and it's between 15 and 16 pounds, a little closer to 16 pounds. But when you hold that in front of you, I've held many, I mean, I've got a little 15 pound weight in front of me, a barbell. And it, it just doesn't calculate to that. It it's just seems like it's closer to 30 to 35 pounds. 
it, it's a heavy, heavy unit, but you know, I guess it's not terribly heavy if it's only 15 and a half pounds. Um, but yeah, um, also another, another thing that I had to do, I mean, I don't know if this is different than, this is a, a signature edition. It's got a, a different front end on it. Um, so I had to do a lot more stuff there. There's these, uh, sonars up here. Those, those come off, but they're, they're mounted to different pieces with, with, with adhesive and, and uh, little clips that you've got to pry off and you have no room to get the bumper off to work back there. That was a challenge. So I had to pull the grill out and pull the bottom grill out and work those out in all those mounting areas. And then, and then, um, my camera has runs wires up here mounted to the front fascia and, and it's clipped in with these, uh, you know, pieces, I can't remember my terms, so, you know, don't crucify me if I, you know, it's just these clips that press on and they bite into the plastic and you gotta get your screwdriver and, and pry them out a little bit so you can get them off. And there's just no room when it's this far away from the front of the car when the bumper's there. I mean, all the wires are not very long. You can't, you're, you just have, you know, maybe five inches to get in there and put your hand in there and take all this stuff apart. Um, and then the little sonars, um, this is for the parking sonars. The, those were pretty easy to get off, but the, um, I saw on, on a video that you could just undo the uh, two screws that hold that on and pull this, uh, this light out back. Um, but they're just not very long wires. And then these pieces were in there that held some wires, uh, to the side of the uh, the bumper so they just didn't rattle around. And I uh, have some really industrial type tape and, and these just, you had to tear them off. There was no way to get them off and pull the bumper out. And so I just put some really uh, tacky, once it's on, it's hard to remove tape on either side to hold the wires to the, to the, to the plastic. Um, and then what else was there? It was just, it was a massive challenge. And hopefully I've got, you know, it didn't take, you know, 25 pounds negative pressure uh, on my, you know, my fill uh, system. Um, hopefully, you know, I got the air bubbles out. Um, it did take a little bit and, and I filled it up. Also too, another really important thing, to make sure I'm in the video, is I put everything back. I don't have any screws, thank goodness, laying around that I was like, eh. I put everything back, but there's two two plastic, crazy looking lightweight plastic pieces that that are from here and go back, and from here and go back, and they're they're just crazy shape, and 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 I had to I had to cut mine. Uh, this one went back in, and I didn't have to cut that one, but this one because of the hoses, because this doesn't sit up high like the the stock um, heat exchanger, it sits low, so it's got a. I had to go in and last night and spend about um, you know an hour and a half, uh, two hours going in and out of the house and I have a Dremel and I'm really good with the Dremel and I've got uh, certain bits that cut through plastic and, uh, and I had to come out here and test fit it, go in and cut, test fit, go in and cut, test fit, go in and cut. I had to remove a large portion of the bottom half of the, of the back side because of the hose position that ran into that. Um, I wasn't just gonna, you know, most people just go eh, and throw that, you know, that plastic piece away, you know, and, and that's where I don't do that shit. I don't, I put everything back because there's a purpose for that. It's to keep the air not flowing around the radiator and off into, you know, this cavity over here, but directly put as much air into the heat exchanger and the uh, radiator as possible. I mean, I've done that before where I removed uh, just a just a cheapy little rubber plastic, you know, maybe th two inches tall that went all the way across at one of my Camaros back in the eighties. And uh, it, because I was scraping it on a bunch of things, it was just flimsy plastic pieces, nothing, it was insignificant. And my car started overheating and I didn't make the connection um, that the, uh, the Camaro IROC was, you know, so low to the ground it didn't have a lot of air going in the front grill. So it had that little two piece stick sticking down about that wide and about, you know, black, just kind of rubbery. And what it did is it caught the air that went under and forced it up in and onto the radiator. Um, I mean, you know, otherwise, you'll, if you don't put shit back, back on the car, you're gonna, you're gonna damage things and it's not gonna run right and it's gonna rattle. 
and you just got to be meticulous. And that's where I want to do it myself instead of taking it somewhere and not seeing what they're doing. And then, you know, um, you know, a story real quick. And I had a, one of my Volkswagen GTI, uh, two point whatever turbo, uh, you know, I had a couple of those cars and I really uh, enjoyed them, but I would take it to the same place to get the oil change by my uh, house in Grapevine and the freaking oil change place just took off the whole bottom half of the skid plate of the whole car and threw it away and didn't put it back on the car. And, and I one time got under there and, you know, and I knew this, there, you have, that's for aerodynamics and all kinds of, you know, splash guard. And I went back and they were, they were like, oh, we didn't do that. And I said, you sure did. Where's my skid plate? Well, and I looked at, we went down there and they had hundreds of skid plates of people's, you know, or deflectors or water splash guards. And they had them down there in a storage underneath the ground where they changed the oil, you know? And I ended up getting really pissed at them and they, they ended up giving me another one. Um, and the, you know, those things are probably a couple hundred dollars, $150 for just a, a piece of plastic. Um, so it just pays to do things yourself. But with that said, I, you know, I, one out of 10 wrenches, I would, I would, <laughs> I would say this is, you know, definitely a, a seven, you know, or an eight, you know, it's just tough. Um, so if you just want to do it, you know, uh, and I spread this out over two days. If I had to do this in one day I, and I was pressured and I had to go drive somewhere, I, I would, I probably would have been in trouble, but I had two days and I just wrapped it up and it's, I started about 9.30 and it's now 12. And so this all went back pretty easy and I got all, all the bolts and everything right. There's probably 30 bolts of, and five different bolt types and screws on the bottom and, and all these clips and there's some extra clips and there's the underneath uh, these little rubber pieces that sit down uh, right in front of the tire. There's, there's three, there's six of those. Um, all these things had to come off. So, you know, I'm finished. So hopefully, you know, um, you know I don't believe in, in luck, um, but uh, that's how it goes. So if you enjoyed my video, found it informative, um, this did take a lot of time. It'll take a lot of time to upload because there's lots of little uh, pieces that, that I had to do and not get too long on the video, which is probably going to be a 30 minute video. But if you liked it, um, give me a thumbs up so, you know, or subscribe. Um, definitely ask me some questions. Um, feel free. I mean, if somebody wants to come, lives in Dallas and wants to come, wants me to help them do this, you know, hey, yeah, let's, let's go ahead. If you want to come by and you want to uh, purge your system, I mean, I've got that now. You know, it'd be cool to, you know, get a, a pack of beer or something out of that, but I'm not going to charge anyone, you know, a hundred bucks. Uh, but now I see why Joe Tech would charge $450 for this, and their, their technicians do this to GTRs and 370Zs and some Ferraris and some Lamborghinis and some other cars. They do this on a, on a daily basis, so they've, they've probably got it down, but, you know, $450. I just hate paying people for something that I can do. It's just something in my brain. So other than that, have a nice day. Thanks for viewing it. Thanks for tuning in. and. Uh, See you to the next video.